Hello, darling. I'm home. Hi, Jill. I was watching TV. Do you want to join me? No, Jack. I don't want to watch TV. It is 7.30 p.m. And you've been lounging around the house and drinking beer since you returned from your screenwriting class. I'm exhausted. I'm hungry and I'm furious at you. Well, I'll be dipped. It is 7.30. Life has been such a breeze since you moved in. Hey! My screenwriting teacher says that the finest example of comedy on television is The Simpsons. Come on, baby. Let's watch. I don't want to watch TV. So what do you plan to do about dinner? Jack, will you please turn the television off? There. The television is now turned off. You haven't even thought about supper, have you? You just expect me to prepare it, don't you? Well, I'm tired of making dinner for you. Who do you think I am, your slave? Your cook? Why can't you make dinner for once? I cannot cook like you. What do you mean you can't cook? You're 40 years old. You moved away from your parents 22 years ago. You have been doing something to keep yourself alive all these years. I did not say that I can't cook. I said I can not cook like you. I can't just throw together something out of thin air. It takes me days of preparation, meditation, contemplation and procrastination. I've seen you cook. You have seen me prepare a bowl of oatmeal and throw a London steak on the grill. And that, my love, is my entire repertoire. It's not that difficult. Maybe for you it isn't, but for me it's torture. The number of things I can cook properly can be counted on one hand. So, why can't you just throw something together like I do? The last time somebody told me to throw something together I added mint flakes to the chili. Now who would have thought that the simple addition of mint leaves would create something totally inedible? Anybody with an ounce of common sense. If I had known you wanted me to cook supper then I would have defrosted the turkey in the freezer. And it's not just any turkey my dear, it's a free-range turkey. It went to church on Sunday, jogged 10 miles a day and saw a therapist on a regular basis. And then there's the frozen wild salmon that's been sitting there for the last 9 years. Living with you is like living with a caveman. You just want to throw a hunk of meat or a dead fish on the barbecue. Can you say carbohydrate? I can say carbohydrate. Listen closely my dear, filler. Most carbohydrates are nothing but filler. You must be crazy. They're perfectly nutritious. They help to properly balance a meal. Maybe, but I have to eat a lot of it to feel satisfied. I prefer a pure protein fix. Great, but that doesn't answer the question what's for dinner? Let's go out to dinner. Let's go to the Super Salad or China Star. All you can eat. That's all you think about. These places encourage gluttony. The food is loaded with MSG and sulfates. They never killed me. Not yet. But look at yourself. A body ridden with allergies, sensitive skin and nearsightedness. Get a clue, you are what you eat. God, Jill, it's impossible to go out with you. You practically have to inspect the kitchen before we can sit down to eat. And even then. The air conditioning is too high or it's too noisy. I swear, there's no end to it. No end to it? No end to it. There's no end to the noise you make in the morning before you leave for work. And there's no end to the way you watch TV. You know I like to watch TV. But day in and day out. Don't you understand? I'm doing research. I'm not just watching these comedies in a mindless stupor. I'm studying them. Yeah, sure. Besides, what's it to you? When I bought the TV, I made the point of getting one with an earphone jack so that you would not have to listen to its sound when I was doing research. So you think a pair of headphones will make everything all right? I'll show you what I think of your headphones. Are you done? Yes. You broke my headphones. There's laws against this, you know. This is the worst thing you have ever done. This is even more terrible than the day you attacked the magnetic poetry on the refrigerator and scattered little words all over the place. You deserved it. 
You ate all my chips from the co-op. There is no justification for the destruction of art. You destroyed my favorite poem. The destruction of art? Why, you don't even recognize what a moment of creativity that was for me. Besides, the poem wasn't all that great. You right. It was brilliant. Hoist up those heavenly thighs, baby. The best is yet to come. Like I said, pure crap. I still don't understand why you would destroy my headphones. Some demonic force must have come over me. Those headphones were the one thing that made it possible for us to live together. But don't worry. I'll replace them. I'm really, really sorry. It's me that should be sorry. I must make you crazy with my domestic incompetence. I just assumed you knew how to cook when we first met. I mean, look at all the cookbooks on your shelves. They were all gifts from people who thought they could reform me. I see. Guess they all gave up on you. <laughs> My god, it's hot in here. Why must you always crank the heat up so high? How hot is it? It's fucking hot. It's 90 degrees. What is the matter with you? I like it hot. Put on some clothes. You don't understand. I get claustrophobic when I wear clothes. I need to prance around in my underwear. You can't prance in your underwear when, when you're freezing your ass off. And during the summer you've got the air conditioning down to 50 degrees. Clearly we have two different ways of looking at things. Why don't you wash the dishes, darling? Okay. All done. No wonder there's no water in the desert. You're using it all to wash one dish? That's it. Is there no end to your ranting and raving woman? Okay, I admit it. I'm wrong. Wrong about everything I do. Wrong about the way I wash a dish, the way I run the water and the way I eat. You probably would not approve about the way I wipe my ass. For now on, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. All I want is to do is make you happy. Don't give me that crap. If you were so intent on making me happy then why did I have to fight you for an entire month before you would allow me to put up a clothesline in the backyard? Because I thought it was silly and unsightly. But now I know you were right all the time. The clothes really do smell like fresh air and sunshine. You must know that I would go to any length to please you, my sweet. Stop it. Don't do things to please me. Do them because they make sense and because they make you happy. And please don't talk down to me and then proceed to demean yourself. I hate it when you do that. You are just saying what you think I want to hear. It's so fake it makes me want to vomit. All right. All right already. Anything else? Yes, my dear. If you do not get your act together soon then you will not be getting any sex. Oh wow. Oh my god. What's that, honey? Looks like you've seen a ghost. I just had a revelation. My gastronomical skills have returned. You must be joking. No, Jill. Honest. I just remembered how to cook. I must have suppressed the memory because of some trauma at an early age. Why, this changes everything. How about a nice tuna casserole? Or perhaps you would like some pasta shells with Sardinian artichokes? It all came back to you. <laughs> what brought that on? Honey, it is far easier to cook for you than to argue with you. Okay, I admit I have been lazy and I am sorry. But that's all over now. I am going to turn over a new leaf. Well, that's a relief. So then your screenwriting teacher says The Simpsons is the best sitcom on television. Maybe it's time for me to do some research while you are preparing supper. And oh, by the way, Darling, can you please step on it? My stomach is growling in the most alarming way. Yee -haw!